time for the match game, Hollywood Square Hour, with from Hill Street Blues, Rene Enriquez. From Night Court, Richard Moll. From Dallas, Vern Fitzgerald. From On Stage America, Randy Oaks. George Goble. And the stars of the match game, Hollywood Square's Hour, Gene Rayburn. And John Bowman. one at all. Thank you. We got a very warm welcome from our studio audience, and we deserve it, don't we? I deserve it. Yes, yes. We're a marvelous bunch. Nice to have you with us, Randy. We'll Thank talk you. a little bit later. But I got to find out about this outfit. <laughs> Which? What about oh. that outfit? It's all red. Your shoes are red. Got a big red hat. Where'd that come from? Would you believe that I was just at a party and Larry Hagman wore this into the party. Larry Hagman? Not, not my, not his wife. Larry wore this. And I said, I must have this for the Strawberry Parade. So which you is borrowed the 26th. it. I borrowed it and I said, ah, I'll wear it for Jean. Looks very chic on her, doesn't it? Guys? <laughs> Splendid. <laughs> Thank you. All right, would you all join me in a little applause here for Deborah Miles and Kelly Salisbury. <laughs> Find out a little bit about Deborah first. Tell us okay. about you, please. Well, I've been married for 13 years. I have two daughters, ages 12 and 9, so that makes me a full time mother and an overtime wife. <laughs> yeah, you're a very busy woman. All yes. right, Deborah. <laughs> Kelly Salisbury, tell us about you. Well, I'm from Bakersfield, California. Yeah. Born and raised, and I'm a part time dental assistant, but my real love is choreography, which I do whenever I can. Really? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. You dance it? You mm -hmm. create it? I you... create it. And Sometimes I dance in it. Is it modern, jazz, ballet? Mostly musical comedy, but... Yeah. Well, that sounds fascinating. Now, we'll start the match game. We'll play three rounds. The winner will go on to challenge our returning champion on Hollywood Squares for a chance to win up to $30,000. Debbie won the toss. We'll ask you to go first. I'll take B, please. You want B? Right. Here's what B says. <laughs> the customer at the Italian restaurant said, This coffee is terrible. And the waiter said, That's because our water is shut off. So instead of water, we made the coffee with blank. <laughs> sure. That Italian. was a terrible Italian accent, Gene. I don't, you don't have to do an Italian accent. Oh, it's, oh. An it's an Italian restaurant. Italian restaurant. And the customer said the coffee's terrible. Yeah. And the owner said that's because our water is shut off. So instead of water, we made the coffee with blank. It's a good joke. Well, I hope you're going for the joke. That's good. Very good, Randy. Um, um. Randy is doing a wonderful variety show with a couple of old friends of mine named Nick Vanoff, uh, Gary Smith, and Dwight Hemian. And, and the name of your show is? On Stage America. And it's on uh, in almost every city in the country on, on independent stations, is it? Except for the city that my dad lives in. What city is that? <laughs> well, it's not really a city. Randalia, Iowa. And your okay, father can't. Okay, 40 people. I give in. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to Nick and Dwight and Gary oh, and those people there. And when you finish, you put the things in the slot. Remember that? Oh. oh. That right? Yes. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> All right. George can't find his slot. Let me help you. George, what are you doing? There. There. See, that lights this light up, George. Oh, it takes a little while to catch right. on. Now, Deborah. <laughs> okay. Customer at the Italian restaurant said this coffee is terrible, and the waiter said that's because our water is shut off, so instead of water, we made the coffee with blank. Spaghetti sauce. Spaghetti Ooh. sauce. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were thinking terrible. of other liquids in an Italian restaurant. Here we go. I'm not too thrilled with that because spaghetti sauce is it's not nice, going to happen. Deborah. It's not the right answer, but it's nice. Yes. Too many baby diapers. There's a couple of right answers here. This is the answer. Anna Zett. Anna Zett. Uh, hey. No, that's not... <laughs> what? 
<laughs> no, that's not too terrific. George? Uh, first, I wrote vegetable soup. But I, I remember then it's minestrone. Which minestrone is, is what George has. Oh, well, all right. Like got a book. <laughs> you, oh, yeah, yeah. you let us know when we get the one you like, won't you? <laughs> all right, Renee. Well, I was close to the spaghetti. What goes with the spaghetti is wine. So I have Bardolino. Wine is a good one. Well, they're letting us know when we get to the good ones. And we, Renee got to a good one. All right, John. Well, I, I'm kind of with Renee, but I'm very particular about how I ruin my coffee. So I said, suave bola. Right. <laughs> That's another good one. Brandy, what have you got? Same. Why? Vino. Good. That's a good one. Richard. Spaghetti sauce is no good. <laughs> no. Make it a coffee too lumpy. <laughs> right. You're going to have to keep it in the family. <laughs> Use olive oil. Olive oil. That's, That's a good one. Have a little pop Olive oil is good. Don't boo him. Don't He's taller than you are. Answers, Nanny, Don't boo him. He's taller than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, ready. Lyle said, my hometown was really small. <laughs> you got to get on the ball here. Now, when I show the crew, you got to do it. All right. My hometown was really small. <laughs> Sorry, fired. Get them out of here and get the other bunch in here. I'm fed up with you. The fire department couldn't afford a Dalmatian. Okay. So instead, they just painted spots on a blank. <laughs> couldn't afford a Dalmatian. That's a dog, you know. Yeah. <laughs> with spots. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Kelly. Lyle said, my hometown was really small. The fire department couldn't afford a Dalmatian, so instead they just painted spots on a blank. Chihuahua? Chihuahua's okay. <laughs> Cute little Chihuahua. Well, I was going to say on a picture of a Dalmatian, but... I thought Kelly would say a cat. That's why I cat. said cat. Well, now, this is a round one question. Anything goes here. What a hateful group. Cat, mouse, anything. George? Herb Schreiner used to say he was in a town so small, they had a beauty contest and nobody won. <laughs> I wish he was here today. I mean, yes. Um, is the audio working? I mean, can they hear? Can't hear him? Herb Schreiner said he came from a town that's so small when they had a beauty contest, nobody won. <laughs> I guess so you got a better delivery. Well, yeah. uh, <laughs> they didn't hear you, George. Black cat. A black cat. Painted white spots on a black cat. All right, Renee. Gene. What? I had Chihuahua. You had Chihuahua. But I, yeah, you that's... told me a dog. So they didn't have money for a dog, meaning ruling out dogs. So I changed it to a cat. Mm -hmm. But I had Chihuahua. Minute. Chihuahua is a dog. That's yes. I do. <laughs> but you said they didn't have money for a dog. They didn't have money. They couldn't afford a Dalmatian. A See, a Dalmatian, Dalmatian is an expensive dog. So instead, they just painted spots on a Chihuahua. How if expensive you said... do you think a Chihuahua is? <laughs> I don't know. I have Listen, never what it comes Chihuahua. down to, Kelly, is nobody picked your answer. You're getting me all mixed up, Renee. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gene. All right. Gene, just... I had Chihuahua. Show me your answer. But I didn't care that. what you said, so I said Chihuahua. Okay, <laughs> Show off. All right, Randy. Show off. I'm obviously giving Good away everything about my background here. A pig. A pig? <laughs> I'm from the Midwest. She's a little farm girl. Nothing wrong with that. All right, oh, Richard. God. I just said a white cat. I'm sorry. A white cat is okay. That would look like a Dalmatian. So there's round one, one and nothing. Kelly's favor. Round two coming up right after this for you. Watch great athletes sprint for super passwords. Throw. Javelin. That's it. Wrestle with surveys. Name the most famous athlete of all time. And swim with the sharks. We have 10 senior Olympic athletes as they team up with great games. Survey set. And go for the win. That's a big thrill to hold up my hand. Yeah! Name something that should be done slowly. <laughs> Not this slowly, however. Buzzer's Fun Run, July 17th. Let's play. 
Here we go. Remember the old telephone match? Well, we got a new telephone match. We're going to do it right now. This is a contest where someone out there in television land can win $5,000 and a chance to appear on an NBC soap opera. We've made our selection at random from your postcards, and our home contestant today is Rhonda Caudill from Louisville, Kentucky. Let's find out if Rhonda is there. Hello, Rhonda. Hello. How are you, my dear? I'm nervous right now. Are you nervous? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, good. Can you hear me? Yes, real good. Oh, terrific. We can hear each other. <laughs> Listen, just because your chart card was chosen, you are lucky enough to get $500 in cash. That's yours. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. I can see you're pretty thrilled about 500 bucks. Okay, now, one of our production assistants has already told you the names of the six stars who are on the show here, right? Six. Six stars. Six. Six stars. And uh, w you're going to play the telephone head-to-head -head match with one of our stars here, and now it's time for you to make a decision as to which one that'll be. Oh, let me tell you. What's that? Fern. Who? Fern Fitzgerald. Fern Fitzgerald. Yes. Fern Fitzgerald. All right. Now, she's going to write her answer down, and you'll give me a verbal response when I call for it, but don't say the answer until I ask you, all right? Good luck to you. Here it is. Oh, wait a minute. I got to read it off a card, which is in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the fuck. John? Hold on. Don't go away. Oh, here it is. Here, hold. He. Orange blank. Got that? Yes. O R A N G E. You understand? Uh -huh. All right. Think about that while Fern is writing. <laughs> Fern is ready. Now, you collect the $5,000 in an appearance on an NBC soap opera if you match her. What do you say to that orange blank? Juice. Juice? Juice. Orange juice. Okay. The audience likes that answer. But the most important thing is, did Fern Fitzgerald like it? If she did and wrote it down, that means you get the money. Fern, we turn to you. What do you say? Well, I just love her accent. <laughs> now, Miss, Miss Rhonda. Yes. She's got her arms in. She's got the money. Hey, congratulations. We're going to send you a check for $5,500. That's going to be sent to you uh, as soon as possible. And we're going well, you are welcome. We'll look forward to seeing you on an NBC soap opera. You may get to be an actress, even. Well, I don't that. <laughs> I don't either, my dear. Thank you very much. We'll look forward to seeing you. Bye. <laughs> All right. Shazam. Away you go. Now let's go to round two here. Uh, Kelly, you're ahead. You go first, A or B? Um, B, please. B it is. Thanks a lot. B <laughs> says, Fat Frida won first prize at the costume party. You see, she jumped into a vat of gray paint and went as a blank. Ah. What was that again? What did I read it again? Fat Frida won first prize at the costume party. She jumped into a vat of gray paint and went as a blank. <laughs> all right. It's all leather. Your whole outfit is leather, isn't suede, it? Suede, darling, suede. Suede. Well, suede is leather, isn't it? Put it in a slot, Touch Renee. again, George. Touch again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go, Kelly. <laughs> Fat Frida won first prize at the costume party. She jumped into a vat of great paint and went as a blank. Elephant. An elephant. Oh. <laughs> a gray pachyderm. <laughs> what do you say? Well, I'm not going to take credit for this because I stole this answer from George. From Lonesome George, elephant. <laughs> All right. One for Kelly. I said elephant because I couldn't spell pachyderm. <laughs> George, have you been performing someplace? Is that yes, I, I was uh, in New York, and I guess I got to talk, and it's louder over there than it is here. <laughs> and then I got home, and I tried to say hello to spooky old Alice. Yes. That's what did it to me. You oh. can't get a little word in there. No, you can't. <laughs> and then when you were flying here, you probably sat under one of those vents in the plane all the way across, and that um, didn't help. Hello, Renee. You had a little trouble with this, did you? Yeah, I didn't. I, I saw this from Richard, so I said, that must be a fat vampire. A fat vampire. She jumped into <laughs> a great pen and went as a fat vampire. <laughs> All right. Yes, you're next. I'm next? Yes. Hippo. Hippo. 
All right. It was what a toss-up. Sorry. Well, I was going to say a rancid sausage. <laughs> you changed your mind. But yeah, I did. I decided. What did you say? Battleship. Battleship is good because they're battleship prey. Oh, that's <laughs> So Kelly picks up three in her round two question. Deborah, let's see if you can keep up with her. Mean Marvin is the meanest fireman in the station house. How mean? You're improving slightly. <laughs> Before the other firefighter slid down the pole, he put blank on it. That's how mean he was. Woo. All right. You hate it, right? Also, no, it's good. No, it's Deborah. <laughs> mean Marvin is the meanest fireman in the station house. Before the other firefighter slid down the pole, he put blank on it. Glue? Glue is good, Deborah. <laughs> All right, she said glue. What do you say to that? She did. Well, if this doesn't match, I'll eat Larry Hagman's hat. All right. <laughs> Crazy, glue. Crazy glue. All right, it does match. That's one for her. George? I thought about glue, but then I thought sandpaper. Sandpaper. Uh, oh. A little vindictive, you know. But... Wow. He said he was mean. Yeah, that is mean. It, it, it's painful to even think about it there. Renee? Well, I just love to see all those mean firemen stuck to the thing. Glue. All right. Glue is what she's after, John. You've been married for 13 years. Yes. I've been married for 13 years. Probably glue. just stuck together like glue. <laughs> Score is tied three to you. three. I'm surprised so far that no one has said Crisco or Grease or any of those other that things. that make it easier for you to slide easier. down the pole? Easier. That's and the only reason. You couldn't grasp onto right. it and you'd slide down and hurt yourself. That would be or mean. Just pile up at the Ooh. bottom. Right. Glue. Another glue. Four. All right, Richard. I think they're all a bunch of copycats. Why? I'm with you. That's right. Hey, Bauman, you can relate to this, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know right. so much about it. I knew it what just was. Okay, so name. there we are. Four to three, a very tight game going here. The third and final round right after this. Here we go, third and final round. Uh, Deborah's ahead. She'll go first. Eight. All right. Whoops. There we go. Who plays? George and Richard. Ugly Edna hey. said. Huh? Just hey. a few. <laughs> ugly Edna said, my ugly baby is being paid to pose for the cover of a package. Unfortunately, it's not baby food. Instead, it's a package of blank. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't be proud, Richard. Copy the answer that she gave you. It's a good one. Please, Richard. <laughs> no! All right. All right, Deborah. Ugly Edna said, my ugly baby is being paid to pose for the cover of a package. Unfortunately, it's not baby food. Instead, it's a package of... Dog food. Dog food, says Deborah. Okay, George. She said dog food. She's a very bright lady. Dog like food. Dog food. <laughs> Hey, I hear your show got renewed. That's right. Night Court is back. Thursday night. Between Cheers and Hill Street Blues, be there on NBC. Right. And a way to go, Richard. What do you got? I was going to say maggots, but they usually come in a can, I think. Yes. <laughs> so I decided to say worms instead. Worms. All right. So Deborah has five, and Kelly, that means you need two to tie and three to win. Are you ready? Yes. This is it. A helpful hint from the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour. Research team. They say, don't ever trust a jeweler who tries to fix your watch with a blank. <laughs> <laughs> it's Renee, Randy, and Richard, the three R's. Good. Kelly, are you thinking about this? Are you ready? Don't ever trust a jeweler who tries to fix your watch with a hammer. Hammer is good. <laughs> Splendid answer. I love your shirt, Renee. That's really attractive. Thank you very much. You're a fashion plate. Thank you very much. They call me GQ. Nice. Your dress is nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you show us your answer, please? She's looking for hammer. You got it. Oh, there's one. Four is now five to four. Same, hammer. Randy has hammer. 
You have a tie. It's all up to you. It's up to me. Yeah, put the pressure on me. Put the pressure on me. I'm with you, Kelly Hammer. from the match game. Deborah Miles, ladies and gentlemen. Hey there. Congratulations to you. Now we're going to switch to Hollywood Square. The rest of the set will come in. Three more stars will appear. John and I will trade plays. Lots more excitement coming along. Don't go away. We'll be right back. A member of our studio audience will receive Hitachi's 13-inch diagonal table model color TV. 100% solid state, low power consumption, special signal tracker system, memory fine tuning, 70 position UHF tuner furnished by Hitachi. Now, it's time for more of the match game. Hollywood Square, our win from another world, Anna Stewart. From Trapper John, M.D., Brian Mitchell, Marty Cohn, and taking over the star of the Hollywood Square, John Bowman. And we'll be back in just a minute to play Hollywood Squares. Be sure to join us. From John Bauman and the Hollywood Square. Here she is, Kelly Salisbury. You know, my father was a dentist. Was he? Yes, yes, not a choreographer, however. Oh. Also, he didn't play Match Game and make it into Hollywood Squares. We have three brand new celebrities with us. Marty Cohen oh. is here. Hey, Marty. Anna Stewart Marty. from Another World. Marty. And Brian Mitchell. <laughs> They're all from Another World, but only Anna Stewart is actually on the soap opera. Anna Stewart, uh, welcome to you back again. This is your second time on our show. Thanks. And we were talking about that you have pets uh, and you live in New York City. Is it hard to keep dogs in New York? It's not hard to keep my dogs because they're very low maintenance. They're mellow and they're wonderful. And, and when I vocalize, my, my female dog vocalizes with me. Everybody says that she should go on the David Letterman show and, and do that. She does opera and everything. It's great. <laughs> well, I like the idea of a low maintenance dog, don't you? It's true. Why don't you and I zip over here it and play Hollywood Squares? Here we go. <laughs> Actually, dog food was an answer that helped you get through uh, the match game. We have our returning champion. Her name is Diana Smith. It is how many days for you? Three? Yes. $25,350. <laughs> You're rich. You are rich. Now, uh, as you may or may not know, we tape usually two shows on one day and three shows on our second day of the week. Uh, and you see them all on separate days, of course, but we taped two, you won both days, and then you had a chance to actually go home and see your family. What did they have to say? They all died. He couldn't believe it. I'm so sorry, sorry to hear that. Yeah. It's too bad. The family well, it's such a pity. Are you going to be okay to play Hollywood Squares? Yes. Okay, well, we'll play it until you hear the time's up, Bill. I'm so sorry your family won't be able to hear it, too. Uh, now, at that point, someone will go on to play Supermatch and, and could win up to $30,000. You won 20 in one shot a couple of days ago. Uh, now, the... Um, <laughs> Yes, thank you very much. The first game is worth $100 plus $25 for every square. And Diana, you get to start. Pick a star and let's go. Jean, please. Mr. Hey, Rayburn. Wise decision. Dear friends, we are gathered here. <laughs> yes. What are there more of in the United States? Women who are truck drivers or men who are registered nurses? More women truck drivers or more male nurses? I would say more male nurses. What do you say, Diana? I agree. There are more women who are truck drivers, and you should have disagreed. No. You should have disagreed. Let's hear that you buzz. That? You should have disagreed with Gene. Thank you. And your opponent gets the first square. And it's not even really close. Over 85,000 women who are truck drivers, 45,000 male nurses, so almost double. Kelly Salisbury, you got 1-0 up there. Pick a star for another. George, please. OK, Mr. Goebel, mm -hmm. into the breach. If you take a plate with a slight crack, and you boil it in milk, will the crack disappear or will the plate shatter? I'd just buy a new plate. <laughs> Use paper plates. No, the, uh, the plate, uh, no, it will not shatter. 
The crack will disappear. Crack will disappear. What do you say, Kelly? Agree or disagree? I agree. The crack will disappear. That's kind of nifty. Especially nifty for you because you're right to disagree and you get another square. <laughs> so, Diana, she is off to a really hot start and you got to stop her with an X. Pick a star. Brian DeBach, please. Okay. Why did I know that? Why did I know that? <laughs> Brian Mitchell from Trapper John, M.D. Yes. In CB radio slang, is a bear bite a speeding ticket or a quick lunch? A bear bite. Well, I think Smokey the Bear is the, the highway patrol officer, so I would say a bear bite is a speeding ticket. Come on, good buddy. Come on. Agree or disagree, Diana? Come on. Um, to block. I agree. A bear bite is correct. It's B-E-A-R is a speeding ticket. And you make, are make, right make, to make, rate make, make, you make, the square. 10-4, good make, money. We're going to be make, back to finish our $100 make, game right after these messages. See you then. Stay tuned for more of the match game Hollywood Squares Hour. Buzzer recommends updating your password every 30 minutes. Start at 2 with your original password. Then at 2.30, change to a more complicated password plus. Change again to a super password. Nothing beats a perfect password. That's perfect. Weekdays starting at 2, only on Buzzer. Now back to John Bauman and the Hollywood Square. 50 for the challenger, 25 for the champ. What that mainly means is that it's early yet. Diana just got a pivotal question. Correct. And Kelly, now it's your move for an O. Marty, please. Marty Cohen. Yes, John. How are you? Oh, I'm kind of excited. <laughs> I'm very excited because I just came from a party and Larry Hagman's wife was wearing these. <laughs> so she let me wear them. I'm kind of, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Marty, according to Emily Post. Yes. If your father's name is Rollo, then I'm in the wrong house. No. <laughs> uh, Rollo Cohen doesn't quite work, no. does it? No. Rollo, yo. Hey, yo if your father's here. name is Rollo, is yeah. it okay to call him Rollo? Or is it bad manners to call a parent by their first name? Do you know, that's, that's something that uh, a lot of kids do when they get to be 15, 14 or 15 or 16. They think they, that they're grown up now and they can, go, they can call dad Rollo. In my case, it's dumb. My dad's name is Frank. But, they, um, but it's actually terribly disrespectful. In fact, I called my father Frank once, and I think the reaction was something like, and that was it. I... So he says, don't call your parent by their first name. You're I'm sorry, Fern, did I, did I leave a little all over you? Oh, La Larry's going to be so upset when he gets his hat back, isn't he? <laughs> but I would, say, but I would say in truth that it is disrespectful. Emily Post would say, call your gotcha. father dad. Call right. him dad. Be respectful. Don't call him by his first name. Don't what do you say, Kelly? Name. I agree. It is bad manners to call your dad Rollo or whatever his first name happens to be. Am I right, Frank? Frank, Frank am I right, Frank? I'm right, aren't I, Frank? I know. Diana Smith, your move for an X. Richard DeBlock. Mm -hmm. I'll get my shoulder pads game. right now. Okay. <laughs> you missed this when the first game goes to Kelly. Richard Mall, are there trash cans on the space shuttle? Or is garbage just thrown out into space? I don't know. I've never heard of any bins floating around up there, or any of those uh, big green things that they throw them in. Hmm. I give up. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's a little too tall for this game. What do you think, really? I think so. Okay, I would say that I think it's, it's really bad to litter no matter where you are, and I think they're going to dispose of it on or in the ship. Thank you. So he says, there are trash cans on the space shuttle. What do you say, Diana, to block? <laughs> I agree. There are trash cans on the space shuttle. Yes, you're right to agree. You get the square and you do block. Right. As a guy who comes in and empties them every Thursday. Kelly, you are thwarted in that position. You are playing O. Oh, Make no, your move. Thwarted. Fern to win, please. Right. She couldn't uh -oh. stop you here. Fern Fitzgerald. What, John Bauman? <laughs> Seriously, Fern, why is that? that outfit, the shoulder down on that side there, on that one side. Because that's the side I'm sitting on. <laughs> Can you believe this? I had an answer. I was going to say I don't want George to be lonesome. And he stole my... George! We'll try this one on, Is that on, a Bert. shoulder? Here's a real fashion question for yes, you. You're going to yes. love this. Does Queen Elizabeth own a casual crown for daytime affairs? <laughs> or is there no such thing? Well, I've seen her in Ralph's in one, um... <laughs> it's true. And Shirley, what's her name, also wears one in Ralph's. Um, I would think that she probably has one with, like, 
fake jewels in it. That's what I think. <laughs> so she has a casual one. So she says there sure is such thing as a casual crown. For sure. the game, do you agree she or disagree, Kelly? I agree. <laughs> there is no such thing as a casual crown. You should have disagreed with Fern, and your opponent gets that square Ooh. and blocks oh, no. you there. So, two blocks for you. One on your own, one given to you by Kelly, and it's your move, Diana. Renee to win, please. The tables have turned. You could win the game with Renee Enriquez. You. Can you survive by eating just potatoes and milk? Or will you drop from malnutrition? Well, how do you think I live? <laughs> of course you can. You can survive. Absolutely. For the game, can you survive on potatoes and milk? He says you can. Agree or disagree? I disagree. You can survive on potatoes and milk. So you should have agreed oh, with Renee, and like your Richard. opponent gets that square. Sure. That's the motto on the wall at the NBC commissary. Kelly, <laughs> you are playing O. Pick a star. Randy, please. Okay, Randy Oaks. And let me point out, although these are in no particular order, if she gets this square, she will have five O's on the board, and that means she wins the first game. Randy Oaks, you're a baby turtle, and you've just hatched out of your egg. Do you have a shell, or are you naked? <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> Can I touch it? <laughs> um, uh, you want to sit next to him, Randy. <laughs> I don't believe they have a shell. She says, baby turtles are naked. What do you say for the game, Kelly? I disagree. A baby turtle has a shell. That is the sign of a good player. You are right to disagree. You get the score. You win the first game. And boy, that was kind of a thriller, wasn't it? But especially for her. There's still time. We're going to go to a commercial and come back with a $200 game. Don't miss it. to 75, but it's a $200 game. Everybody sit down, pay attention. Diana Smith, it is your move for an X. Marty, please. Okay, Marty Cohen. I've got an attitude, hey, I've got an attitude, whoa. <laughs> is the average TV commercial louder than the average TV show? What? <laughs> or does it just seem that way? The average, the, is the, in other words, you're watching the show and they're going, Susie, do you think you'll ever be able to marry him? <gasps> yes, by this! They're very loud, that's true. And the reason for that is they want you to buy the product and they know that if you've fallen asleep during the TV show, you'll wake up to hear about toothpaste. So that is the truth, they are louder. Who's doing that to me? Wait, it says commercials are louder. Oh, that's Fern Fitzgerald. With what do you say, silly. Diana? I agree. Commercials are louder. Yes, you are right to agree. You get the first square in the $200 that. game. And Kelly Salisbury, she is on the board. Pick a star for an O. George, please. Okay, Lonesome George. Mm -hmm. If you do this to an attacking bear, he will give up and run away. Show him Fern's hat. Should you spray him with skunk spray or show him a mirror? Where will I get the skunk spray? Just bring and, it out like and this. And where will I get the mirror? Yeah. Let's assume you could spray him with skunk spray and you just happen to have a mirror. I, I'd... Uh... Punch him in the nose and show him the mirror when his nose started bleeding. <laughs> That's a creative answer. So show him a mirror? Show him a mirror. So show that attacking bear a mirror. What do you say, Kelly? I agree. You should spray him with skunk spray. And you should have disagreed with George. Your opponent gets that square. Skunk spray. That would discourage me. Diana? Richard to win, please. Yes. This would give you the game and the lead. Richard Mall. Yeah. Which came first, the mafia or cement? Why are you asking me this? Hey, do I look like I would know that? Really? Seriously? Yeah. Ah, uh, one's nothing without the other, I think, really. Uh, uh, let me see. I would have to say that uh, cement's been around for a long time, like maybe even to the pyramids and like that. Is there a hum in here somewhere? Okay, I'll say cement. He says cement came before the mafia for the game. Agree or disagree, Diana? I agree. Cement came first. You're right to agree. You get the square, you win the game, and you take the lead. And Richard's quite right in saying cement has been around a long time. Cement was being made in the 5th 
century. Mafia began in the 1600s, so a mere thousand-year difference. That gave you the game. Congratulations, Diana. But there is still time. Sweep the X's off of the board. Challenger Kelly Salisbury, you got to be efficient now. Pick a star for an O. George, please. Okay. On his recent trip to China, President Reagan had 150 of these flown out from California. Was it 150 copies of his autobiography or 150 turkeys? Uh, 150 of his by well, they probably, uh, unless it was translated into Chinese, they couldn't have read it anyway. So he probably, he probably brought uh, turkey, turkeys. He says 150 turkeys were flown out from California. What do you say, Kelly? I agree. 150 turkeys. Yes, you're right to agree and you get the square. There's a great footnote here. It says the turkeys were flown out for a big dinner. For a big dinner. They were the guests. No, they were the dinner. Diana Smith, your move for an X. Gene, please. Okay, Mr. Rayburn. Yep. You're celebrating your birthday in your cell at San Quentin. Will the warden allow you to drink one beer? Or is that strictly prohibited? Hmm. Never having been incarcerated, uh, I really wouldn't know about this, but I would assume that alcoholic beverages are strictly forbidden. What do you say, Diana? Agree or disagree? I disagree. It is strictly prohibited. No, you should have agreed with Gene in that case, and your opponent gets that square. So, Kelly, you have been efficient so far. Pick a star. Brian DeWin, please. Okay. You get this one, the game and the lead go back to you. Brian Mitchell, you're yep. over 40, and a man has finally asked you to marry him. <laughs> <laughs> Now, according to the... <laughs> After all, this is the 80s. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on, time is bleeding. <laughs> according to the New Woman's Guide to Getting Married, yes. is I it okay to wear a white wedding gown, <laughs> or would that make you look ridiculous? <laughs> well, I think I'd look ridiculous in a white wedding gown. Um, uh, I'd say, uh, I'd say it, it would make you look ridiculous. Okay, so don't wear that white wedding gown. Agree or disagree, Kelly? I disagree. It is okay to wear white. You are right to disagree. You get the square and you win the game. And I've said it many times before, that is the sign of a good player. Knowing when to disagree, the bell means that time is up. She has done it. $600. Kelly Salisbury is our new champ. Good for you. You don't have to stand up. Just zip yourself right. Well, now you can stand up. Sit yourself right over there and join Gene Rayburn. Get set for your shot at potentially $30,000. Uh, you had a good run here on the show. She and did. I don't know if it makes you feel any better to know that she did earn that win. Sure did. Yeah, yes, that was a did. real yes, good competitive did. match today. Uh, Diana Smith is leaving here. We don't feel too sorry. A total of $25,700 for a lovely contestant and a lovely woman. Thank you. Gene, take it away. Okay, here we are with the champ, the new champ. We'll be back with her and the stars for a go at the big door right after this. One, eight, two. Say it again. One, eight, two. One, eight, two. Ready. Ready. <laughs> Excited. Very. <laughs> All right, good luck to you. You could win up to $30,000 here in the Super Match. Let's begin. We polled an audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Rear blank. If you give us the answer they wrote down most often, it's $1,000 for you. For the second, $500. And for the third, $250. Whom do you call on for a little assist here? John. I, 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 I'm going to go with the ever popular rear end. They are popular. They're popular in my block. All right, another one. Marty. Uh, uh, um, I think there was an Alfred Hitchcock movie called Rear Window. There was indeed. So Rear Window is two of them. And Randy. Randy, have you got one? The third oh, position no. is very difficult. Maybe Richard or John can uh, give you a little assist there. But Fern seems to have one. Oh. What? Just came to you from the blue, eh? Rear View Mirror. Rear View Mirror, right. So there are the three you've got, and they're pretty good. Rear end, rear window, and rear view mirror. Do you want one of those, or would you like to create one of your own? Rear end, I think. 
You want the rear end. What you Let's saw, we end. all. Yeah. <laughs> hey, John, all right. your rear end. Let's, she wants a rear end. So, my, for my first number. <laughs> now, let's, uh, <laughs> let's take a look at the $250 response, if you would, please. Rear window. There's the Hitchcock story that Marty gave you. All right, the $500 number says rear door. Sure. Oh, the back oh, door. Everybody yes. knows that. Makes sense. All right, here's your last chance for your rear end. May we see it, please? <laughs> right. Now, time for the head-to-head -head match with any star of your choice. After you've made your decision, the star will reveal the hidden number. We will multiply that hidden number by the $1,000 which you've just won. And, uh, of course, if you get the 30, the big one, there's only one up there, it'll be $30,000 that you're playing for. Pick your star. John. All right, John. Here we go. 20000 is what you're playing for. $20,000. That ain't bad. Oh. Good luck to you. Here it is. No help from the audience, because if we hear an answer up here, we got to throw it out and it gets messy. Panty blank. P-A-N-T-Y blank. All right, John's ready. Kelly, it's up to you to collect the $20,000 simply by matching him. What do you say? Hose. You say panty hose. All right. All right. John, she says Patty Hose will collect 20000 for her. What do you say to that? Well, Joe Namath collected more than 20000 for Patty right. Hose. Are you wearing yours, John? Kelly Salisbury's not going to be far behind, is she? Right. out which of the stars had the big number. Would you all reveal them? Ready, set, go. Yank your tail. Oh, yank your tail. Ryan Mitchell. Oh, Ryan. Ryan. I know it. Ryan. I felt it. I felt it. First time you've had it. First time ever. Right. We're very happy for you. Me too. Do I get it? Does that you mean win? you win the $30,000? Yeah, yeah, you win absolutely nothing for that. <laughs> but you can borrow a pair of my pantyhose if you'd like. Thanks, Don. Stars, you were terrific. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow, as we will Kelly. And we invite you to join us tomorrow. And John Bowman saying so long for the match game, Hollywood Squares, Zara. See you then. A member of our studio audience will receive 28 Diamond Venerous Fashion Watch, adjustable Italian mesh bracelet, silver tone dial and case, Precision 17 Jewel Movement furnished by Fenris. This is Gene Wood speaking for the match game, Hollywood Squares Hour. I'm Mark Goodson, television production.